Meow. You know, I fucking hate cats. But I think I can make an exception for Michelle Pfeiffer. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Extreme Channel. For you new people, my name is Mr. X, and today we have another Extreme Collectible. While this is not a new collectible to the industry or to me, I wanted to put her on the review table for a few different reasons. And she is a one-fourth scale, meaning four times smaller than Michelle Pfeiffer was in real life, Catwoman from Batman Returns. This is made by Sideshow Collectibles, one of the largest statue manufacturers and distributors in the world. And as I said, this piece is probably over 10 years old. I don't know the exact date. If one of you knows the exact date, go ahead and throw that in the comments below. The reason I tell you to do that is we're doing a statue giveaway. We are going to hit 20,000 subscribers in 2020. To do that, we're giving away a statue every 2,500 subs. At 15,000 subs, the winner will get to choose between these two PCS Mortal Kombat statues. Make sure that you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Then stay tuned towards the end of this video to find out how to enter. Michelle Pfeiffer, a.k.a. Selena Kyle, a.k.a. Catwoman, from the live-action movie Batman Returns that starred Michael Keaton as Batman, which I was actually a big fan of Michael Keaton as Batman, particularly in the first Batman movie. I remember seeing that in the theaters. I've talked about it before. That was back in the day when they didn't have electronic ticket systems. I was in San Francisco, and they sold too many tickets, so we still got in the theater, but there were no seats, so I actually sat on the stairs and watched the movie. That was Batman 1, not Batman 2 that she's actually from. But I've always been a big fan of Michelle Pfeiffer growing up in the era that I did. She was kind of the hottie of that time, and to be honest with you, she still aged very well. And I purchased her because right behind me is my movie collection, and I have movies from horror movies to action movies to uh, DC comic related movies and I think she fits really well with a lot of the DC penguins and jokers and things of that nature that I have. And she was one of the first larger pieces I bought a good number of years ago, probably four or five years ago. And I remember I paid a little bit higher than retail for her because at that time I didn't know what was and wasn't a good deal. So she originally retailed for $450 back in the days when statues this big only cost that much, where they're about 50% more expensive now. And they made 2,500 of her, which was a very big ES or edition size for that time. But she's still aptly available today from secondhand buyers, whether it's buy, sell, trade groups, or eBay. But today we're going to take an in-depth look at her because we've never done it before. Michelle Pfeiffer in leather with a whip? Come on. So let's start this extreme review and we're going to talk about concept on this piece. Now because this is based on a movie, one of the things I always lump into concept is likeness. Did they get the likeness of the character right? As well as talking about the pose of the piece. Does it look cool? Does it follow the storyline from the movie? Let's take a look. So on the bottom you have this museum sub base. I'm not a fan of museum sub bases. I don't think they're needed. Uh, for whatever reason they decided to do that, they did have another piece from this line that I actually used to own, a Michael Keaton Batman, and I can't remember if that had one or not. He was on some stairs, but right above that is a rooftop, which there are a few different scenes on a rooftop. I think that's where her and Batman actually fight for the first time. They may share their first kiss right before she uh, sticks his claws in him, just like a woman. Just like a woman, she gets you all excited and then just stabs you right in the front. And it's kind of cool what they got going on there. It's obviously you see a vent on top and then some brick wall behind it that she's leaning against. And she is very sexy, very sultry. She's in her classic costume, which, which she actually made on her own. I like how they showed the transformation of Selena Kyle into Catwoman in this movie. And it's all stitched together. It looks like real leather. It's fully sculpted. She has her whip uh, wrapped around her. This is what we call a museum pose, where it looks like they're posing for a picture. She's not in the middle of any... Uh, action or any dynamic aspect to her but I don't think she needs to because she is such a sexy and sultry woman and, and it also does a great job representing the character and as you move up there's no switch outs on this it's all one piece she has an awesome expression very mischievous uh, very beautiful very mischievous it captures the character it captures the movie I think they did a fantastic job and I think the likeness is done very well especially in a time where there weren't as many micro details in the sculpt. I don't know if this was digitally sculpted or traditionally sculpted, but there is a great likeness to Michelle Pfeiffer wearing that cat hood at least. So I think they captured the character, they captured the movie, they captured the actress. So I think the concept's a four out of five. Uh, I didn't give it a five out of five because it was nothing amazingly dynamic, 
but it's done very well. They did a nice job. Design is very simple on this piece. And since I unboxed her so long ago, I don't remember much. Let's find out right now. But obviously she's probably a separate piece from the base. She keys in right there. And I believe I had to wrap the whip around her. And that's really it. So there's not a lot of complexity and not a lot they can mess up. I like the fact it's all one piece. I don't think this needs additional switch outs or anything of that nature. But let's get the dimensions really quick, which I think are great because she doesn't take up a lot of space for a quarter scale piece. So the diameter of the base is about nine inches. And then the height on the statue is just under 22 inches. And Catwoman herself is about 17 and a half inches or so. So the scale is accurate. Now one thing now that I think about it, there actually is a separate piece. Her arms are separate pieces right here. And where they had the seam where the gloves meet up, you can't really tell they're separate pieces. It's just been so long since I actually unboxed this and put this together. So that was very smart for breakages and to be able to make sure her arm rests on here and she can hold the whip properly. So I think that was done really smart as well. Really design wise, just like concept, there was nothing crazy out of the box or anything elaborate they had to do. It was very simple, but they did it well. I think the design's a four out of five as well. I think the design is also a four out of five on this piece. Before we dive into paint and sculpt, I'm actually traveling for a while, and when I do these reviews, it's actually quicker for me to do the video review, so we're going to do a video review of her and quite a few other pieces you're going to see lately or in the next few days. Uh, but let's take a look at the paint and sculpt up you know, close. Honestly, there's not a lot of different stuff going on here, but at the bottom, it's, this one's a little dusty. The black museum base, it's fine. Nothing great, nothing horrible. But I do like the building a lot. So I like the outer brick that they have here. There's a lot of different colors in here. That movie was really dark. And I think they, they followed that through on the building as well. I mean, you don't know if this is the middle of the day or if it's at night, but the different uh, bricks jutting out. And the concrete layer on top is done really well as well. It's done really well as well. The texture is good. Uh, the different coloring, the browns and grays and whites mixed in there. Looks like real concrete, especially for something uh, a little bit older like this. And the vent pipe right here, also I like the age on it, I like the wear, it helps tell the story. And then the brick wall behind her I think is even better honestly. It's, it's really aged and uh, just tells, tells that story. I know I keep saying the same things, but uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in this statue when there's not a lot of stuff to look at overall. But of course the star of the show is Michelle Pfeiffer. So she has these huge boots, laces going all the way up. Everything, as I said, is fully sculpted. The whip may be a little bit of a different material. Um, it has to be wrapped like that. It's not like it's pliable, but the boots look great. They're a little bit different, um, not as shiny as the costume itself, which I appreciate because she kind of uh, homemade that costume. The stitching is good, but as you get up close, you can see it's kind of, uh, tattered they could have done a little bit better but from I'd say about 12 inches away it looks excellent you see a few folds and then even some parts of her skin where the uh, costume is stitched together I like how they did that and these parts it almost looks like her skin is a little bit darker than her portrait which we're gonna look at in a second the high heels on the boots we didn't really look at and there's almost a little bit of blue in there that you can see which you typically didn't see in the movie, but she's in very, very dark scenes when she's in the Catwoman outfit. I think they did a great job with the anatomy. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer isn't necessarily an extremely busty woman by any means, so they capture that well. Again, more of her skin showing. And it adds this allure of, you know, um, you know, sex sells without being too trashy, I think. Then on her hand, she had these uh, nails, which were part, of, I'm not a sewer by any means, but I think she used these for sewing. She took these out of her uh, home, I remember that. These are what she stabbed Batman with. And these are a little bit more flexible material. Not super flexible, but you wanna be careful with them. And I like how, you know, her uh, hand right here it's wrapped around the uh, whip handle while still showing uh, the sharp nails. That's great. And what, how they segmented the costume is just really well done. But let's look at her portrait. That's the biggest part of this. So I think the, I like the uh, complexion. The shades of her skin look really good. Uh, you know, 
obviously she's beautiful, Michelle Pfeiffer, a little bit more pale, uh, which she was in the movie. The red lipstick, the blue eyes, and again, that sexy, sultry look. I think they did a great job with this portrait, uh, and they didn't have to do amazing. You know, it's easier to get the likeness when you just have to show part of it, I would assume. I'm not a sculptor, but the sculpt and paint, well done, good likeness. So overall, just a really cool piece. It keeps, uh, because of the colors, I think it, it's having a hard time focusing here. First on the sculpt, I really like the building. I think they did a great job. I like the stitching on her outfit, like I talked about. Her portrait's good, but overall, I think it's a good sculpt. It's not amazing, it's not bad. It's a three out of five, which is a good score on this channel. But I really dig the paint. I think they did a fantastic job with the glossy look on her, the different colors in the building. She was very pale. Uh, in the movie, as I said. So I think the paint is a four out of five. Very nice, very well done. And at Sideshow Con, you know, they teased another version of her. I'm not gonna pick it up no matter what because I think this one is fabulously done overall. Uh, while we're not gonna talk about value because it's an older piece, I suspect when the full reveal of that piece is done, which it may have been already, I might have missed it, uh, the value on this will either increase or decrease depending on how good that one looks. But overall, does it have the X factor? Is it a five out of five statue? It's not, um, but I definitely could see that if you're a huge, huge Michelle Pfeiffer fan or you're just a diehard of the original Batman movies, this would be a 5 out of 5 statue for you. It's one I intend to keep for a long time. Uh, I talked about a lot of the things I like about it. I think this is a 4 out of 5 statue. I think it's highly underrated. I know a lot of people that have owned it always praise it, but I do see it for sale a decent amount as well. But in my opinion, it's a four out of five statue. Let me know what you think of this piece. Let me know if you would ever pick this one up or the new one that's coming out. And I can't remember if it's by Sideshow or Tweeterhead. I didn't pay much attention to it. But uh, let me know in the comments. And the reason why I ask you to do that is that'll help you win that statue. To win one of these Mortal Kombat statues, all you have to do is comment on a video. At 15,000 subscribers, I'm gonna pick a random video and pick a random comment. That person will win the prize. They can choose between these two pieces. Also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Well, that's it for today, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to check out tomorrow. We have a cool video dropping. Hit that Mr. X logo to subscribe and check out some of these other Sideshow pieces. Until tomorrow, take care of your dad.